Welcome everyone. Today is Saturday. It's May the 7th. I'm Frosty and this is Mog Talk where the Final Fantasy 14 community comes together and discusses everything from savage rating, yeah, savage rating, yeah, to mm -hmm. Chuckabo racing. Today our discussion will actually be on a player base that actively doesn't have a desire to participate in the Final Fantasy 14 in-game rating scene, hence the title of today's show, No Need to Raid. Before we jump into it, of course, let me introduce our wonderful guest today. First, we have with us, again, an outstanding and dedicated streamer who has streamed a total of 470 days in a row. So far, Puka Jitsu, man, how are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing great. It's uh, good to be here. 470 days, though. Um, mm. I think we're going to make it to just 500 and just stop. Just drop the mic. Just, I'm done. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching that, man. So, uh, Pook, before we get into today's conversation, I do want everyone to kind of know where you stand with raid content. When's the last time you stepped into Savage or raid content in general for Final Fantasy XIV? Uh, that, that was um, a while ago. It was, I maybe raided, I did about four weeks of attempts at A1 Savage. And uh, that's it. That's where I stopped. Uh, we didn't actually get it down while I was in the group. Um... It was early on, and uh, it just wasn't wasn't working. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> it's been a while, man. Uh, yeah. Considering you know that came out seven, eight months ago, nine, yeah. ten about months ago, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's, it was a that's a while, man. All right. Well, next we have with us another amazing streamer who's responsible for a multitude of hilarious content for Final Fantasy XIV. Very merry. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, you got your finger pointing directly at him, man. I mean, the only way you could go is down, but I mean, either way. Can't really mess that up, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so, very merry, same question for you. How long has it been since you actually uh, enjoyed or, you know, just participated in Final Fantasy XIV in game rating? Hmm. Well, the last time I actually rated was uh, first uh, Alexander Savage. Um, I got to A3S, and as a lot of groups did, mine just kind of dissolved. Um, but the last time I really, like, hardcore rated, because that was kind of, you know, we were raiding, but we weren't going hardcore. The last time I hardcore rated and was going for, like, server firsts, that was uh, Savage Coil back in A Realm Reborn. So you're coming from a perspective that was, like, world first progression to nothing. Right? Well, not not world first, but we server first. Server first. Okay, server first. Sure. Yeah. All right, so server yeah. first, like, being competitive with it. Yeah, we got two, so that was cool. That's really good, man. Yeah. Unless if you're, you know, you're on Solera or... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, what's the other one that Sly's doing? It's... Uh, Mateus. Mateus, okay, yeah. Mateus, yeah. There you go. Uh, all right, so today our conversation, of course, again, is going to be a topic that some people don't actually tend to realize is a factor in the Final Fantasy XIV community, which is that there are actually a large amount of people who don't play the game and for in-game rating they play the game to do everything besides in-game rating and when i'm when we're talking about ratings today we may say rating in general and we're not talking about void arc we're not talking about uh you know eight man maybe experts uh, or eight man experts eight man <laughs> extremes or anything like that we're talking about uh the savage content in the game that actually you have to sit there and practice and bang your head up against for hours to days to weeks to months before you can actually clear it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually a lot of people who don't ever intend to do that content, and they enjoy the game a good bit. Uh, I actually had that Reddit post up just the other day that I wanted to just find out, get a feel for how many people were out there, and hundreds of people replied uh, in just you know a few hours. So I thought it was actually really interesting to hear uh, that the community cares about the game more than just rating, because that's yeah. when I'm getting into rating, I'm thinking, um, when I play an MMO, I'm sorry, when I'm playing an MMO, I'm thinking, hey, let me get to the end game content and just start working on it, and that's the point for me. Uh, so I feel, felt like uh, it's been a kind of a misrepresentation on the show so far, because we've done a lot of shows just on rating, so we haven't really been representing the game overall, because there's so much more to the game than just rating. Uh, so... Let's get it started off here. And first, I'm going to ask you, Pook, first, if that's okay. Okay. That way, because okay. yep, last yep. time I asked Mary a question first, he kind of like froze uh, off and couldn't seized. do it. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm just messing Whoa. with you. Uh, so, first off, uh, why do you not currently raid in the game, Pook? Um, it, the, there's, a, there's a number of factors. Um, one has actually been streaming. Um, 
uh, it I've never been fully comfortable streaming raid progression. It feels like it's a disconnect from what the stream itself should be about, which is usually about the community and the people there. Uh, not to mention that I feel like it also could be a detriment to the group as well because my attention is split. Um, that's one of the things. Um, but beyond that, I also realized that um, uh, coming from the background I do in other MMOs I've played, uh, you always end up telling people, hurry up and level so you can play the actual game. And um, I mean, it happens in WoW. That happens in WoW all the time, you know. Except for Warlords of Draenor, apparently, where, where it's backwards and the questing is good and the rating is shit. But um, it, right. it was the same kind of approach that I kind of took into 14 and found myself making a mistake there. Because the game itself does offer so much more outside of rating um, that I've really found my enjoyment in just doing the the daily content, just doing the regular stuff with with friends rather than having to put ourselves in that position where we're now raiders pushing for something um running into the 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 critiquing and the the adjusting and all the stuff that some people that play the game just can't deal with and i would rather and for me it became more of experience of this is a game i can play with people that i actually enjoy playing video games with and I don't want to jeopardize that with raiding, uh, especially when I, I feel fulfilled without having to have the raid gear. Okay. Because uh, so, there's so many other ways to progress your character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And both of you guys are streamers, and you do a lot of stuff with Final Fantasy XIV and streaming. Uh, mm-hmm. And that definitely plays a big part, I would assume, into whether what you do in the game uh, and why you come into the game every single time. And raiding does take away from the viewer experience. Um but, you know, it's not, again, it's not the only reason. You guys have tons of reasons why you'd rather do other things in the game besides raid. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary, what about you, man? Uh, I'm kind of the same way in that, um, you know, nowadays the reason I don't raid is mainly because I stream, you know, every single day. So I don't want to have that, you know, progression mindset where I'm sitting there and I have to either focus on the raid and I have to ignore chat or, you know, talk to chat and then my attention is split and we're wiping, you know, I just, I don't want to deal with that. And so that's one of the big reasons that I, um, you know, I don't raid anymore. But another reason um, that kind of surprised me was uh, for the longest time, like I've played MMOs for probably the better part of 17 years. Um, and I've always been into Endgame. As soon as I started playing World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XI, like I, I loved Endgame. I loved doing it. Um, and I always wanted to be like the best. I wanted to be, you know, I want to get that server first, that world first. And mm-hmm. it, it just never happened um, because I, I didn't have the time or I didn't have the raid group or anything like that. And then uh, come A Realm Reborn, you know, I, I find this awesome raid group. Like The night they pulled me in, they were still progressing on, um, I think it was Final Coil. Um, at the time and you know we were all like I 120-ish nobody had a whole lot of gear because it was still kind of relatively new content and um, you know they they needed a ninja and I was a ninja main at the time and I was like try me out you know and that night my very first night I had done uh, only turn uh, turn 10 I'd only cleared turn 10 they pulled me in we cleared 10 we cleared 11 12 and 13 all in one night, and they had yet to clear 13, so it was their first 13 clear. It was my first time in there, period, but the group was just like so in sync, and it was fantastic, and we, you know, we just got it down. I was like, wow, and they're like, you're a great ninja, you know, stay with us. And so we wound up doing Savage, and I guess Savage wasn't really popular on Balmung because uh, turn eight and seven had yet to be cleared, mm-hmm. and we wound up getting the server first for turn eight and turn seven. And it just kind of like completed that like lifeline goal of you know i want to like be in a top tier group and actually like be on the forefront of progression and it happened and now that it's over i just like i sort of feel like i can retire it's kind of <laughs> weird but but a lot you, you yeah. hear that a lot with like uh like counter strike players for example like they'll win the world tournament or whatever and then they just kind of like fall off the face of the earth because they like they completed what they set out to do and that's kind of what i feel like i did so i like i retired from the raid scene Fair enough, man. Uh, and that is, Balmung's a pretty decent size server, although a lot of people do joke about the RP scene being like the main scene for it. Yep. Um, so, 
I can kind of feel that. Like, uh, after being competitive for so long, you just want to kind of take a break and relax. And it does feel really good yeah. uh, to not have to stress about it. Um, actually, some of the points that I've heard people make is that uh, not raiding makes the game less stressful overall. 100%. And so you can kind of just absorb it and uh, just kind of enjoy everything. And that's something that people were saying in chat earlier as well. Uh, level up and raid. Hurry up and raid. Or, you know, we, we got to get you up in uh, the point. And you were talking about it a little bit, uh, Pook. But there's so much you miss out on trying to catch up really quick. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And there's the game has a lot of content for you to actually enjoy and absorb while you're leveling up and you can actually get into it. They make cut scenes. They put voice actors in there. They, they do a lot of stuff to kind of build the universe up. For you while you're playing it and uh that whole rush to the front uh of the front lines i guess is kind of uh sad to hear but i mean that's how people enjoy the game so maybe they yeah. don't care about it they're like hey i just want to raid whatever f you koji i'm pretty sure that's what he takes he takes his middle finger every time people do that but i'm sorry um so let's go into kind of uh currently Right now, we know, Mary, you don't pursue it because you don't really have a desire to anymore. You kind of feel yep. like you're retired. Pook, uh, you don't do it mainly because you feel like it would be bad for the stream, right? Or is there... that, that, that's, that's the big part. And the, the other part is is that I realize that when you're a raider, you have, you have raid relationships, a.k.a. people that are really good at raiding and adjusting and taking criticisms and all that sort of stuff. And then you have friends. And not always are friends good people to raid with. Right. And I realized that I more enjoyed the game playing it with friends than I did playing it with raiders. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's completely true. Uh, you could yeah. have a really awesome friend. And I've heard so many stories on this show already about people who are leading raid groups. And they're like, well, uh, I know I want you in here. You're, you're my friend, like, in real life or whatever. And they'd kick them out at a group because, like, I have to, man. You're, you're really not improving. You're holding the group back. And then they just stop talking. And they're yeah. like, well, it's done. I can't believe you did that. You're my friend. And you're like, oh, I'm trying to clear this content. You know, I want to, and you know, it just yeah. creates a ridiculous amount of drama. Yeah. Um, so, and talking about the community pressure, making people actually go into uh, rating and everything else. Do you guys think, I, I, I'm trying to figure out the best way to frame this question, but do you guys think that the pressure is something that could be removed in the end? Could people have rating without all that pressure? Or is that just something that's part of rating? You're always going to have some sort of pressure in there to do well, and you're going to have miss out on a lot of other things in the game because of it. As long as the content exists in such a way that it's a challenge, then there's always going to be a need to overcome the challenge, and people are always going to talk about the most efficient and most effective way to do it. That's always going to be a thing. Um, if it wasn't a challenge, there'd be no point to raid. Um, I, I, I know plenty of people that play the game just to raid, um, you know, on the other end of the spectrum where they're like, they don't care for the story content. They don't care for the, the other stuff. They just want to get in on their raid and go and progress from, um, from there. Um, so I, I it, it, it's, it's, it's competitive, but it's, it's a weird kind of competitive because, um, you want the whole group to do their best, but you also want to do the best in the group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't think that's going going to go anywhere. There, um, there's, yeah, it's never happening. <laughs> there's always going to be that pressure, and mm -hmm. um, for some people, that pressure is uh, just another, just another part of the the whole experience. Um, you know, being under pressure and then actually pulling through is kind of an exciting thing in its own way. Yeah. Uh, so. The other part of that is, of course, the, the pressure. They, they try a Final Fantasy XIV community, not the community team, I'm sorry, the developers. Uh, they, they pretty much decided, hey, we're going to introduce Savage and Normal Mode. And Normal Mode isn't really a challenge. I mean, it can be a challenge if you own a duty <laughs> binder sometimes. So you get the right, yeah. the, I'm sorry, the wrong people. Uh, and so, but I mean, it, they want you to enjoy some of the story. And that caters towards the people who don't like the raid. Um, and there's always this back and forth. Should that really exist? Should there be benefits that are like story driven or other things in the game that only hardcore raiders or not hardcore raiders, but raiders in general can get access to that can clear the content? Or should that be something that's accessible by everyone uh, with how they're doing it right now with Savage being separated? So, um, 
so with you guys not being people who go in and trying to clear the savage content, do you guys think that the way they have it right now is set up well, or should there still be some sort of rewards for uh, those raiders? I feel like um, there's not enough because they have, you know, they have their top end, they have their savage. And at the moment, I guess, uh, you know, Midas is pretty well balanced. People seem to like it. You know, it's better than what A3S was. Um, but I feel like there's just not enough because you have the savage, which is, you know, good for the people who really want to like really dig into something difficult. And you have the story mode, which is laughably easy for someone who has any amount of skill. <laughs> right. Um and there's like there's nothing in between, you know. And they kind of had that back in, um, you know, in A Realm Reborn, where Coil was kind of a mid core. You know, it, it wasn't super hard, but it also wasn't super easy. And it was just sort of a mid core tier. And then they had Savage Coil, which was just like insanely difficult and very rewarding. But there was only you know we got titles. That's it. Um, and it felt like there was a good mid core. There was a good balance. So like you could still raid coil, but it wasn't like so hard. But I feel like that just doesn't exist anymore. Like you have easy mode and you have like what savage coil is, but not um, coil. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. And also for me, the story in uh, Realm Reborn as far as the coil was actually a very like it was a driving factor. It was even even though I had seen I, I saw I, I saw streamers beat the turns before I did. I saw portions of the cutscenes. It didn't matter. I actually wanted to go there and see the cutscene for myself. Um, and normal mode does take that away in a way because I get to cut and see the cutscenes anyways, but I didn't do anything to earn them. Um, and uh, so I, I, I do kind of, you know, um, can relate to the people that say that the story should only be in Savage or the sort, the you know, et cetera, et cetera. You should you should have some kind of reward there. But then I also see the people who say, you know, I only play the game to raid. I don't do the main story quest unless it unlocks something. Like there's both sides of that. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I would love to see if they're going to continue to do a normal and a Savage sort of thing that they actually um, and they want to give story that they actually write in the two different groups going in at different times or through different paths for different reasons where the boss battles remain the same but the perspective of the story changes well, that way there is still pieces of the story that are exclusive to the savage or harder rating but you still get the gist of what's going on from doing normal okay so kind of get an insider scoop if you're doing a, a savage rating yeah Okay. I mean, they've done that before too. Like, um, I'm a legacy player, so you know, mm -hmm. uh, 1.0. And my main storyline for Rum Reborn was like pieces were very, very different from everyone else. Like, I got a, I got additional cutscenes and like voice acting that no one else would get because it's like your character is carried over from 1.0, so you have like this different storyline experience that other people don't have. And so they've done it before. They could definitely, you know, do it again. It's not like uh, something that's completely foreign to them. Okay, that's a, an interesting concept. I didn't play Legacy, so like I, I can miss yep. out on a lot of that stuff. You know, even though, and as a side tangent here, even though so many people bash 1.0 all the time, I, I feel left out with not trying to play it uh, and actually being a I part of that. what actually happened there. I hear that a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of, I, I might have not played it. I might have tried it and been like, oh, this is stupid. Uh, mm -hmm. And I just quit playing it, but... I feel like hearing everyone talk about it and actually reading up on a lot of the story, I feel bad. <laughs> it feels bad, yeah. man. Uh, There's that, that 20, 22-minute video that they put on, I think it was a collector's edition of 14, um, that recapped the 1.0 story, and it was narrated by Louis Wall. You can yep. actually find it on YouTube. Mm. Yep. Like, um, watching that video made me want to experience 1.0. Because there there was a lot of good story there. It just you had to go through the nonsense of 1.0 to get it. And seeing it after the fact actually does kind of still feel like I, you know, I've been I've been cheated in a way because I didn't participate in that. Um, I think I would have felt better even if I tried to play the game and was like, this is crap. I don't want to play it yeah. than not having tried mm -hmm. it at all. Yeah. But uh, I um, I. I feel like I feel like you know, Realm Reborn really wrapped up 1.0, and now they they have the 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 full, you know, Heaven's Word or whatever world that we're moving on to in 4.0. Like they have that realm to actually build branching or separate stories, and they should do that. They really should. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I I 
I don't know. <laughs> That's just where I'm at. Like I, 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 I'd really like to see, um, I'd really like to see just certain things incentivized. Um, I won't feel horrible if I don't participate in raids, if they receive things that I don't get. And wow, we received the cooler colors on the gear. Like mm-hmm. instead of getting diable gear, they got a reskin of the, the same gear, and that gear had the better colors, the more desirable colors on them. And there's there's all there's all kinds of things they could do. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I I definitely think there's a lot of stuff they could add to make it uh, more incentivized, and that's actually good mm-hmm. to hear from uh, you guys as well that you think that there should be so, some sort of more incentive for people who are actually going out there and putting the work into mm-hmm. rating, mm-hmm. who play Absolutely. the game just for that. I mean, people want that bragging right. That if they're doing that, they want some sort of bragging right as well. And giving them these things isn't going to take away from the people who uh, are not doing it, I guess. Right, just, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that much of a disadvantage for them. So that's good to hear. I, I guess the next kind of question I have will kind of wrap up the whole overview of the the topic is what mmos are basically just okay massively multiplayer online games right Mm -hmm. and so we're we're talking about mmo rpg one where you can actually get in there has lots of story uh we're all familiar familiar with it like wow and star wars and uh guild wars things like that that make these mmos um and a lot of people again Related to rating, in-game rating, and they get into the game, and that's what people come together to do. They come together in big eight-man group, eight, big eight-man groups, uh, big ten-man, twenty-five-man groups, whatever it may be, to clear this content. But in the end, what what are MMOs really supposed to be about? Are they supposed to be about rating, or are they supposed to be something that's a lot bigger picture? Friends. I, yeah, friends, definitely friends. Like I think the whole raid thing came about because they wanted to amass people in large numbers they wanted to give you a reason to participate in a world full of people it's all about interacting with the people which is which is why a game like 14 is something that i can still play without raiding because yeah. there's yeah you know i mean to me an mmo is absolutely like a lot of people like to say like, i'll see people like Oh, I love playing MMOs, but I like to play them solo, you know? And to me, it just kind of defeats the entire purpose. Like, I, I can understand, like, maybe you're just, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of want to do your own thing. Like, sometimes I want to do my own thing in game. But as, you know, as a whole, uh, to me, an MMO is all about my friends. Because I've, I've met so many cool people. Like you guys, for example. I've met you guys, and I've, you know, come to know you guys. And it's so cool. And I never, ever would have had that without an MMO. And my roommates, all three of my roommates, all play Final Fantasy XIV. I met through them through fourteen. We're all in the same free company. We all play together, and it's just like this. The, friends are the the sole reason I play MMOs. The people I meet, because it's just it's so cool. That's actually really interesting to hear. I didn't know you lived with the those guys. Did you guys? Yep. You guys met in Final Fantasy XIV. Yep. Yep. We met in Final Fantasy fourteen, and now we're all roommates and. We're all like officers of our free company. One of my roommates is the free company leader. Like we're all just huh. That's really awesome. tightly knit. Wait, so if you get kicked from the FC for poor raid performance, do, do you also <laughs> get kicked from the, the place you live? Like, is that <laughs> we can't support you anymore? You're out of the <laughs> FC house. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's funny. I, I've mentioned this story a couple of times, but uh, back when I played WoW, and WoW was a, a huge part of my life, as it was a part of a lot of people's life. Uh, when they were growing up uh, and going through and meeting all these people. And I eventually, at one point, met a certain group of people in an uh, 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 FC, and it's called That's What She Said, right? Uh, it was a good FC. It was, called, it was Guild, right? We called it a Guild in a while. Mm. Um, and so I was playing with them, and uh, years went by, years, and I would have all these like in-depth conversations about just random stuff uh, about life and everything else, just on TeamSpeak or wherever it may have been. Uh, and these guys, I spent a decent amount of time with them, um, and all I had to do was play the game. I didn't have to go out to movies. I didn't have to go out and drink. I didn't have to go out and do whatever. It was really just hanging out. And of course, uh, a lot of these people knew each other in real life, and so they were uh, playing the game, and then they would have parties, and then they'd get really drunk, and they'd get on team speak, and then I'm a part of it too, guys. I'm I'm here with your party, but no. Uh, eventually, uh, go ahead, Pook, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Continue. No, eventually, uh, you know, I said, all right, I'm going to make a trip and I'm going to go see these guys. Uh, that was, you know, one of the biggest risks I've made. I could have got my third slit or whatever, but yeah, I, I figured I could, t- I could take the risk, right? It's been a while. It, the, the long con is too long at that point. Uh, so 
I go over there and I meet with them, and these are some of the generally, uh, I said that completely wrong, but the best people I've ever really met uh, throughout my life so far. They have really great personalities. Mm. They're awesome. They're nice. They're kind. These are the people that uh, I would want to be friends with and hang out with. And a few, you know, after a few more years of me coming out and visiting, I moved to the same area uh, that they live in. I'm super content. I mean, I, 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 you couldn't have gotten this. I would have never been friends with these people, ever, if I didn't go in and talk to people and socialize in an MMO. Mm. Um, so a lot of it became just friends and meeting people and being a part of my life that was easily accessible. Um, and so I think I, I kind of agree with you guys. And sorry if I, I went off on kind of a rant there. Uh, <laughs> but I figured it was... Uh, really interesting to hear that because a lot of times people forget that the MMOs mm. aren't really just about going in there raiding and being done with it. Uh, although people can make that as part of your life, but there's so mm. much more to this game and final fantasy capitalizes on that. They, they have so many things you can do. That's not raiding. There's a lot of stuff you can go out there and interact with. Um, and it feels like a world instead of just, uh, instead of just a, a game. Yeah. If that makes right. sense. Right. Yep. I was I was just gonna say that I, I remember like the whole the whole guild or FC thing of just being about hanging out in whatever voice chat they had like all day, like all day. Like you could be doing yeah. other things and you'd probably be in there still. Yeah. Like they were actually there um, in the in the FC before we switch over to Discord when we had a mumble. There were mumble channels specifically for people that just wanted to sit there and listen to the same music together. Like they're listening to music or they were watching TV shows and talking to each other about it. It was just the whole day. The the people yeah. were there together. Um, and uh, it, 14, 14's, a, 14's a really good game for, for uh, doing that as well. But I did see something in chat that I wanted to bring up because it was, sure. it was uh, timing here. Uh, Zo- Zoela? Zoe said yeah. that uh, I've made less friends in 14 than I did in 11 in Asheron's Call. And I think that's because of the modern MMO design and how there are things like Duty Finder, um, et cetera, where you don't actually have to interact with people to get a group of people. Mm-hmm. Um, the older MMOs definitely did require you to actually go out there and talk to people or at least spam any kind of regional chat. And that way you do run into people. Yeah. And um, I mean, and this game is perfectly acceptable to play kind of by yourself too. You don't really have to go through a lot of different things. If you're not going to get into like really hardcore group stuff, you can play this game by mm-hmm. yourself with duty finder, uh, Party Finder makes it a little bit more personal because you get to know people when you actually go in there and try content. That's actually how I met a lot of people was Party Finder, to be honest with you, at first when I started playing the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can. I mean, a lot of the story that you're going through when you're leveling up, you don't need anybody for it. Use Duty Finder again to go through mm-hmm. like some of those uh, like level 20 effort and stuff like that. Um, but... In the end, uh, there are a lot of ways to communicate with people in Final Fantasy XIV, and I think people don't actually take advantage of that. Uh, if you're a crafter, you can know a lot of people. You really like, can. That's what makes a good oh, yeah. crafter is the crafter yep. knows a lot of people. Yeah, and because... joining free companies is really a social thing, kind of. Mm-hmm. So, Go ahead, Pook, sorry. No, 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 that, that's all I was going to say. That was the point. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, free companies, you can go out there and you can join a free company and it becomes a social atmosphere. Link shells and things like that are uh, great for that as well. But uh, I in Japan, uh, I think we were talking about that actually before. Free companies are just, they're there for social interaction. Like the statics people make, they aren't based around free companies. They don't mm-hmm. do that kind of uh, general support. Uh, which they kind of lose out on a lot of crafting and stuff. People who are really hardcore raiding world progression, you kind of get together and you have dedicated crafters that kind of boost those guys up. But yeah, uh, I think that people should be definitely accepting of joining free companies and being a part of that if you want to go out there and communicate and meet people in the game. Uh, and it's not hard to get in a free company. All you got to do is log in. Mm-hmm. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, one will grab you. <laughs> You'll um, be grabbed somewhere. I, I have a character mm-hmm. started on Mateus as well. Uh, since I was starting over there and before I was level three, I think I had an FC invite just random free company and I actually accepted it just to see, just to see. Yeah. yeah. And you went in there see. and you're like, wow, all these people don't even know what an FC are. It's just a whole bunch of new players. A whole bunch of new players. Like, new players. They just, just accepted yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's get a little bit more into things that you can do besides raiding in the game that are actually entertaining and fun to do. 
Um, and I want to talk to both of you guys about what you've been doing recently, if you don't mind as well. And uh, Mary, I, I know you've been doing some uh, racing yep. recently. So what, what have you been doing recently in the game? So recently in game, uh, obviously chocobo racing. I'm really getting into it. Um, it's a lot of fun. Also, I think I hang on. Oh, there we go. My headphones. Okay. Um, um, racing is a lot of fun. Like they they really changed it up. They added a lot of stuff to it. Um, the chocobo breeding. I'm actually really getting into it. I'm on my. I think I'm on my sixth sixth. Pedigree. Can't yeah. Sixth pedigree. Um, um, almost to my seventh. Um. And it's just, it's fun to, you know, be like, okay, I got to plan this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try and breed for this, try and breed for this hereditary, this race skill. You know, I had a bird that was like four stars and almost everything except for three star and like acceleration or something. It was really good. <laughs> um, but it's, it's actually really in depth. There's a lot to it. Um, and it's, it's fun. You know, yeah. it's, it's a good way to, to kill some time. And so I'm really excited to get to my, my ninth pedigree and start doing that bird. Um, but that's one big thing I've been doing. The other thing is man mode. That's more of a solo thing. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, I'm sure a lot of people know what man mode is. But if you don't, man mode is warrior soloing content, essentially. And solo so, man mode. Solo man mode. Okay. Also group man mode. I do some group man mode, too. But okay. like we'll do, we'll do four warrior... Uh, expert roulettes and we just we go through as fast as a normal group you know no healer no dps it's just fine um but i like doing both solo and you know group man mode challenges because it's it's fun it's like it's not end game you know but it's still challenging right i mean going out there and doing that stuff is actually extremely fun uh yeah. if everybody's kind of just on board of trying to make it work even if it, you're yeah. just being goofy uh yeah. i'm gonna take this out of final fantasy for a second uh we we're playing overwatch the other day like everyone else right now it's uh mm -hmm. participating in that beta um, and we went up against a team that was just uh, six players who were playing Bastion. Oh, yep. <laughs> it's like wow! It, we destroyed them. We, we we completely destroyed them because it doesn't make sense. But they were yeah. just trying to have fun with it, right? They're like, yeah. whatever, we'll just goof off, and you know, yeah. uh, and people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, no, how are we gonna beat this? But no, yeah, I mean, seeing that stuff is a uh, uh, fun. Going out there with friends and just doing whatever. Again, we bring yeah. in the whole friend, friend concept, right? People that you know that you want to actually play and do stuff with. Um, and so uh, I, going back to Chocobo Racing a little bit, Pook, mm -hmm. how much of Chocobo Racing have you done? Uh, not a lot. I think my Chocobo is only like rank 18 and I haven't done any of the breeding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like mm -hmm. Chocobo Racing for me was something that was like when it first came out, uh, grabbed a couple friends and we just we basically treated it like it was Mario Kart. And after that, I I have no desire to race against the NPCs, even though I know it's really good. MGP. I actually spend more time playing Triple Triad than I do Chocobo Racing. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, Chocobo Racing when uh, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, and I just felt like if they made it easier. I'm gonna just yeah. go through it because I can get a pedigree a day, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that, and uh, I didn't realize, I, I thought it was, I hate it when it first came out, I was like, this is dumb. I don't like the fact that it's a little bit laggy. I don't like the fact that I don't get to play with friends or real people all the time. I have to just go in there and fight NPCs. What's the point? I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it became something I just did because it was fun to do on the side. And every once in a while, yeah. I'd get somebody in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Kerr and I uh, actually played some games together, and we just did a shake and bait combo, right? We're like, all right, we're going to make one of us win. <laughs> Somehow we're going to make that work. Uh, and that was tons of fun. And I think Chocobo Racing is something that got overlooked. And uh, it does have a little bit of lag, but it's just part of the game, right? You just kind of yeah. get used to it after a while. You learn uh, to cope, yeah. Uh, yeah. Running through chests and you're like, well, I yeah. probably... I, I didn't get that because I didn't jump two seconds earlier. I, I, yeah. Graphically, it doesn't look right, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I still had fun doing it. I mean, it's Chocobo Racing. It's, yeah. um, exactly. it's something I mess around with. I think that's something that could benefit from crossover queues. Or even if they just added the crossover queue separately, so you could still queue for the one solo if you want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I honestly thought that uh, it was cross-server. Is it really not? Nope. Is it all no, within your not, own server? It's all within yep, your own server, server. So I thought anything you queued up for, like a duty type of queue, was... Nope. Same with uh, Vermilion. Lord of Vermilion. Yeah, Vermilion and Chocobos are server only. That yep. is outrageous to hear. Uh, mm -hmm. And hopefully, and they have said, uh, I think that was actually in one of the most recent live letters, that they plan to make in 3.5 cross-server everything. 
cross server gold server or gold, gold saucer <laughs> cold, uh, cross server chats mm. cross server uh, lobbies yeah they server. they yeah because yeah. they considered yeah. whether they were going to just give you chats that could access other servers or if they're going to give you a place you could go they decided to do like a lobby where you could actually physically go and that will be cross server with anybody on your data center and you can actually go there and put groups together ahead of time like pre right. pre make groups etc or plan what you're going yeah. to do uh, because that's how they're going to counteract the people switching servers to join raiding servers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and mm -hmm. that's a good idea. I, I think it's going to work out pretty well cross-server within a game. It's going to work out great for me. Uh, I know as streamers, it works out wonderfully because you get access oh, yeah. to so many other people who are playing the yeah. game just by your chat. Um, and you're kind of locked out. There's walls blocking you from playing with them, but this is going to kind of tear all that stuff down. Yeah. Um, it, it sucks in the fact if you're like really big on like server first server community stuff because it's going to kind of uh, water down a lot of that stuff I think mm -hmm. uh, although a lot of that stuff isn't really a huge deal when you think about it it's just like minor bragging rights because if you're server first on Solera again you're yeah. not really you're, you're server only too yeah. uh, so it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's okay I, I can mm -hmm. accept that if it means that everyone's going to have more access to uh, gold saucer chocobo race. <laughs> yeah, another really big be. thing. Another big thing with the racing. If you don't, or, you get shut up, Pook. Mary's okay. talking. Go, Mary. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. To cut <laughs> um, I didn't mean to cut anyone off. If I did. Anyways, uh, with the uh, chocobo racing, like one of the biggest things that I think is a huge issue is like I'm coming up on my ninth pedigree. You know, uh, it'll probably be next week. I'll have my ninth pedigree and I'll start breeding it and getting all those four star stats. <laughs> But the issue is, it kind of locks me out of playing with friends because if they have like a first pedigree mm -hmm. and I have a ninth pedigree with maxed out stats and the best racing abilities, I'm just going to just rock it ahead and then they're going to be left in the dust. And it's like they need some kind of like level sync for chocobos so we can yeah. play with friends and not like worry about our pedigrees. Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't be a horrible idea. Uh, at least if you like went down to a certain ra rating uh, yeah. race that it kind of put you to the max of whatever that rating would be for that race and so you, you might still be a little bit overpowered but you're not like super overpowered yeah uh, there's some things they could do to work on the system yeah um but i mean that's something that a lot of people have invested a lot of time into and i got through all the challenges with it and i feel great i got five hundred thousand mgp from it i'm halfway to a finier and i bought the cloud card wow i <laughs> think i bought wow i felt really yeah. proud of that. uh i'm i might have to work on that then yeah yeah uh, so, uh, and there's also other things with Gold Saucer. I mean, there's Triple Triad. People go out there and they make an effort to get all the cards. There's Completionist. And there's a lot of things to complete in the game. And I oh, think yeah. that's a huge aspect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I actually find myself forgetting some of them and then, like, remembering, like, when I'm not playing. It's like, oh, I still haven't done the three or whatever Hildebrand quests are, yeah. that are <laughs> in Heavensward so far. I haven't done those yet. Things yeah, like that. Too. And it's absolutely astounding to think that I could... Okay, so this is something that I heard uh, from talking to people as well, is that there's a guy who's like, yeah, I just started a year. So, like, I a year ago, I still have, like, an infinite amount of content to do. You think about that. You've spent a year on a game, and you still have an infinite amount of things to do. I've spent, uh, I, don't, I haven't played the game for too long, for two and a half years or so, uh, and I still have tons of things that I can do in the game. And I'm not sad or depressed that I've been playing this game for as much as I did, because when I was doing it, I had fun. I enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and to think that I still have all those things that I can do, and these things, uh, I mean, you can say debate, oh, well, it's just grinding for random stuff, or if it's actually enjoyable. But, I mean, in the end, I'm passing time and having, I, I feel like I'm having fun learning a new job or learning a new class or going out and uh, doing whatever I may be doing. Um, and as long as I'm enjoying it, that's the the entire point. I could just go ahead and play a game and risk it like, uh, what's the last Duke Nukem that came out? Forever. Uh, yeah, I could say, oh, well, I wasted oh. time trying that game, uh, which I did. I did. I wasn't, like, the happiest person in the world trying that game, but, uh, you know, it's all right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, sorry, and I keep I keep just jumping in and talking a lot. I have a lot. Oh, uh, it's your show. Fun. No, no. Yeah. You're, you're you're leading the conversation. You're giving us yeah. something to talk about. What the heck? I, I, um, go ahead. As long as I get a sense of progression from on my character in one way or another, and it doesn't have to be like progression, progression. It just has to be a sense that it's moved forward somehow, and I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. Um, that's that that's what the game is for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, 
also talking about the community in general, there's actually communities for these little types of things that people don't realize exist, right? Mm -hmm. Um, for example, the RP community, no one, people joke about it, but this is a serious thing. It's out it's, there. There's it's a big. lot of people. There's a lot of role players. There are a lot of them. I know wow. that. Yeah. I'm on Balmung, so. Yeah, and I saw, uh, you know, post talking about uh, some people who were replying were like, hey, you know, I, I have, RP is what creates content for me. I have new content every day because I RP. Yeah. And people love that kind of stuff. And that time they get a new piece of lore. Oh my yeah. God, just eat it up. Yeah. yeah. I, um, so that's why I love that so much effort goes into actually building this game world. Uh, I love that the game world itself really is a character of its own. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we kind of stopped thinking about that. And when we're like demanding, oh, we need more raid content, more of this stuff. This it if we made the game all about raiding, there's so many people who would be kind of left in the dust. All the RP guys would they'd be fine no matter what. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's like yeah. it, just give them just give them a just give them an in. That's yeah. all I need. Mean. Stay away from the quicksand on Balmung. <laughs> the quicksand. All right, yeah, you gotta elaborate for me. So on Balmung, uh, Balmung is like I guess you know the unofficial role player server, and yeah. they're just right. they're everywhere. Everywhere you go, you just see role players, and it's kind of cool. Like sometimes you can just sit around and just like watch them talk and do their thing and it's just, you know it's cool um but the quicksand is always just full of like 30 40 people all just talking and it's just chaos and then some some things get a little weird sometimes a little too weird and you're are kinda we, like, are we, is this where we add the e on the, the yeah the, okay. yeah and you're like oh i'm just gonna keep going and go to the <laughs> this is this is goldshire and like if you have uh, apparently, oh sorry, poop. Nope. I was just gonna say or the deep run tram, but that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> deep run. Like, oh, I love that place. Apparently, like you know, obviously you know, yeah, role players totally cool. Um, but sometimes like uh, friends who play female characters, they'll say like they're going through and they get some really interesting tells. So sometimes, sometimes it can be a, a bit pushy, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, Guys, don't harass RP. Yeah, don't. No, no, like, no, 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 no. A lot of people, okay. lot of people okay. like to like give them crap and like troll them and stuff, but don't. Let them do their thing. You know, like they're having fun. They're making their stories and like the thing is, like a lot of people, like I love playing a game and immersing myself in the story and getting lost in it and forgetting about everything around me for a little bit. And like they're just doing that. You know. Yeah. It's like. And they're thinking like I, they're at work. They're slaving away doing whatever they're doing, whether it's construction. You know, or they're doing whatever they are, and they're like, "I'm coming home, and I'm gonna be an evil Lalafell." Yeah. And they go out and they do it, and they have yep. fun, and it's a uh, man is more worth more than whatever they pay per month, right? Whether it's thirteen, fifteen bucks a month that they pay, uh, mm. I'm sure that they really enjoy because they have access to that community of people who go out there and want to do these kind kinds of things. So. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a role player. I just don't do it in game. I love storytelling. I love the lore. I love stuff like that. I just. The game has never really been the medium for me, but um, I guess I would say that if you know they're going to be in the quicksand, then just avoid the quicksand. There's no point in going to the quicksand <laughs> and trying to correct them on it. At least they've made it well, they've made it very apparent that if you don't want to see this stuff, it's going to be right here. It's yeah, centralized. Yeah, like, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Um, now, if they start showing up in your FC house, um, I've actually had uh, people show up in my FC house uh, that I've never met before, and, and they were actually run into other members of the FC and they're like, we're waiting for him. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> just, just to, just to troll me. It was, it was hilarious, but it's just like, it's like, okay, if they come to your FC house and they're ERP and then maybe ask them to get out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. So again, if, if you guys are a role player, don't go out and role play o over people's faces that don't want it. Cause you're going to get a bad response. If that makes any sense. That was kind of a lewd way to say it, but I wanted it to be a little bit lewd because that was kind of the conversation we're having. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So the other part is that PvP, and I don't, I don't think. Are you guys really big in PvP? I don't know if you guys have played a lot. Um, I mean, I'm rank fifty. I have like I had probably three hundred matches played in the old Wolves Den. I have like over six hundred front lines. So I've done okay. a, yeah, a, a he's, fair he's, amount. He's, 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 he does more PvP than I did. I I uh, I did like maybe three weeks straight of grinding the 8v8 feast mm -hmm. and i really enjoyed it i did um 
I keep saying I'm gonna go do the four man stuff, and then I'm like, and uh, does it like you look at it and you're, you you treat it like this is this is too serious for me? I don't want to get into I, it. I don't want a solo queue for it. I really don't. I and love that's it. That's am solo right now. queue. I'm gonna be honest with you. It is mainly because you get queues faster. Uh, it's really hard to get a four. I don't. Right now, it's just not the scene isn't really there for the four v four pre made. Um, unless it, they need to set up a night like they did with all the other nights with Crystal Tower and everything else. Uh, like maybe Saturday night, 4v4 queues or something like that, uh, pre-made. Uh, and hopefully that will make it go a little bit better. But, you know, mm-hmm. I try to do it and I spend an hour in a queue waiting for just one team to queue up against me and I never got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we get maybe we can get Joe on streaming at one night. Be like, this is the night that he streams it. Go PvP. Yeah. Uh, and so I've been doing a lot of solo uh, feast and I, I feel like it's actually really enjoyable and there's a community out there for it. There's people out there, uh, the PvP Reborn guys, they have their site. There's lots of other sites out there, I think, that try to go out there and expand upon that community. But um, when I stream it, it's really awesome because uh, I'll stream it and they're like, hey, I know you. And then they'll come to my stream and they'll watch me play. And, you know, when I'm streaming, I'm not actually, it's hard to stream Snipe 4v4 Feast. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can't really do that too well. But, um, these people uh, are out there and they're having fun PvPing, and I'm actually interacting with people who are from the stream while I play the game, and I feel like that's a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know these people too, because you can look at a rank board and you're like, oh well, this guy's number one on the boards for our data center. This is going to be tough, and everyone's like, oh yeah. well, we gotta kill this guy. We know who this is. We gotta kill him, <laughs> and so you get this like reputation thing that's within this community as well, uh, where you're not just facing a whole bunch of random people you're facing people you know and you're like well this guy kind of didn't do so well last time if we kill him really quick we'll probably be able to kill these other guys really quick and so that's interesting right 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 and Mm -hmm. i think that brings another sense of the community to it and now especially because you can see you know names um right front line Uh, anyways um (laughs) but i i I, I will say that Feast has been the addition to the game that is going to get me to stop saying, you don't want to play this game for the PvP. If you're looking for PvP, try another game. I think right. Feast is a step in the right direction, but I miss I miss front lines. I'm really happy yes. that we're getting another front line yes. campaign coming up. Uh, because I would rather have I'd rather have the battleground experience over an arena experience personally. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people uh, are up for that and it's I think most people want to actually go into front lines. Uh, hopefully, GC's gone, but we'll see. GC restrictions, but we'll see they about said, that. They said they're doing it, so hopefully they do. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, people go into that. They, they just want to queue up and just go crazy and face a whole bunch of people at once. And yep. uh, it's a different kind of experience for PvP, but it's still there. There's people out there who uh, are serious about it. They go out there and they have their macros and their commands. Um, mm-hmm. And you don't have to be serious about it. It's the other thing. You can go out there and have fun. It's hard to do that in solo 4v4 because people will be like, oh, this guy. I yeah. can't stand this guy. And so it's a little bit more difficult in that to kind of go in there and just be casual about it. But Load into a game. Immediately somebody's telling you to uninstall. Yeah, yeah <laughs> pretty basically. much. It's like, oh, this healer again. Oh, we lost. Whatever. I, yeah. I've had a couple of games like that where we go in there and it's kind of toxic going into it at first. But, yeah. I mean, people, that's where the serious PvP kind of leads up into is a uh, solo queue 4v4 right now because it's hard to get a group for uh, pre-made. So people just spend their time doing that. But you you also have that sense of, I can't take it too seriously because you're going to get people who are not going to perform well on your team and you're yeah. going to lose and it's completely out of your control. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the PvP is something that people overlook a lot. Like a lot of people were surprised uh, that people said, "Hey, yeah, so I don't raid, but I PvP all day," and people were really surprised by that fact. But there is a raiding scene within the co- no, I'm sorry, not raiding. <laughs> there is a there is a PvP scene within the community that you could go into if you really didn't want to spend time mm-hmm. uh, raiding. There's there's also there is also actually a raiding scene. I don't know if many people have heard about it, but there is a raiding community within this game. <laughs> there is there, people do do some sort of raiding people, in this yeah game. Do raid it's really um, small though really it's really small. yeah all right and so the other thing that i kind of wanted to hit up on is uh of course glamour and so this game is huge ah, the true end game yeah huge on glamour and uh it's a joke again like some people will joke about rp and everything else too in the game but this it's serious people go out there and they farm for weeks to get one piece of uh, uh, one drop from like some old dungeon or something that people don't do anymore. Uh, for example, you can sell those T9 pieces pretty 
for a lot oh, of yeah. money because people oh, just yeah. don't want to go out and do T9 for it. But they right. want that oh, piece yeah. of gear so they can get their T9 gear. Uh, high elegant stuff. And I think that is actually oh, yeah. uh, pretty interesting. How, what are, what's your experience with the Glamour system so far? Pook, you sent me a picture earlier, so I know you care about Glamour. Oh, uh, yeah. Glamour, Glamour is... Um, my character has to look good. My character has to look good. I, uh, it's the same reason I talked about, you know, WoW having the different colors for different raid tiers and that mm-hmm. being incentivized because I wanted the color that looked better. I actually went and did the hard, tried to do the harder raids to get the better color. Um, Glamour has always been, no matter what game I'm playing, it's it's fashion fantasy. It really is. It's uh, um, I, I like that they took a step forward by putting in the um, by putting in the drops from from coil for the the Diablo coil gear. I won't say that I'm 100% pleased with how the Diablo Coil gear turned out, but they yeah. made an effort, so points. Um, I I try to have, like, I, I don't use, like, the base appearance on any of my classes. And I play, I literally play every job. So um, there's a fair bit of time that goes into going, hmm, how do I want this one to look? And I um, I don't Fantasia as much as people I know. Um, that's apparently a big thing. I know somebody who mm. buys five Fantasias a week. Um, literally five Fantasias a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I do glamour obsessively, like obsessively. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I mean, and that gets into the part of feeling like you're in a world too, cause you want, you care about what your character looks like in this world. You want it to be like super goofy or you want it to be something. It's your avatar, uh, yeah. you're running around with. Uh, and there are people that put on fashion shows in game. That's another community. They do fashion yeah. shows. Yeah. yeah. Although that's probably close. Well, I guess it's not linked to RP. Uh, Could be. It, it can be. It has been. But I think that uh, it actually can be a separate thing in itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mary, how's your glamour doing, man? So, I mean, I, it's awesome. Like, I love, you know, having a set of gear that I really like. And I'm basically wearing a glamour that I've worn since Second Quail came out. Um, right now, just kind of with different colors, but um, I'm not like super huge into it because I have like I, I like this set and I like this set, and I'm always going to wear them because they're my favorite. Unless something magically comes out that's infinitely better, I'm just not going to change. Like okay. when I, I wore the full Hyalgen tank set forever since I got it in Second Coil. Um, when I found out the Diablo set was coming out, I was like, it's the first thing I'm doing when this patch drops. And when it did, I immediately just got into Coil. Got my items. I dropped 15 million gil leveling my armor, or not leveling, but like gearing my armor. So it was four star. So I could craft my Diablo High Allegan. I just made it all and I was like, boom. <laughs> done. I'm done. And then I stopped wearing the body because it doesn't die well. It looks kind of crap. But. Okay, yeah. You don't have no need for no body. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. right. And so. Uh, jumping into uh, going for glamour, you can also pull that into crafting pretty well, right? And so we talked about it a little bit. Uh, crafting is really outrageously huge in the game. It's it's close to like uh, Wall Street, I think that you can get to <laughs> in uh, like a virtual oh yeah. game. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Because it plays a big part in it, making the stuff. And you're like, well, I've made all this stuff. It's kind of a, there's too much of that on the market board. Let me start making other stuff. But other people don't care about that stuff. They're like, I want to make people gear and I want to be useful. And that's all they craft for. They, they want to say, hey, I'm useful to you. They don't care about going out and doing the content, but making people stronger and saying, yeah, I'm the guy you go to. I'm your go-to guy. And people love that. And I mm-hmm. feel like crafting is so fulfilling in this game when you actually get done with it because of how much work it actually takes to kind of get to that point and you actually all right so let's compare it to wow crafting real quick right Uh, right click right click Uh, craft go get a sandwich or something come back uh that's wow uh come here and you have to actually put in i press this and depending on what happens i press this next button depending on what happens i press this next button and you actually have to make stuff so you feel like you're crafting um so let's talk about it a little bit, guys. Uh, I am literally the worst crafter in the world. Uh, I've never di- dove into it too hard. Uh, Pook, what is your experience with crafting in this game? I level them on occasion. Um, <laughs> I don't actually actively craft anything. Um, they're all they're all over 50, 51, 52 now. I think I've got the 60 culinarian and a 56 carpenter. Um but usually I wait until I'm done with my jobs, the other jobs, and then I go and I level the crafters just to have them. I don't 
crap at all. Um, <laughs> I have got people who are now insisting on, well, you've got all your jobs to 60, time to level the crafters, and they want crafting streams. And I'm like, you're looking at the wrong guy. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't have the, the, the patience for it, not to actually craft the items, but to invest in the research of knowing what to craft when, because I feel like if you're going to be a crafter, you might as well also play the market, because those two things are so you know right. closely tied to each other. Um, so it's not something that I've done a lot of um, outside of uh, the glamour prisms. <laughs> glamour prisms are <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll just throw up a couple glamour prisms today. Because I'm also the guy that I don't even make my own glamour prisms. I just sell the ones I have and then I go buy them off the market board. I waste <laughs> so much gill on glamour prisms. I really <laughs> nice. do. <laughs> uh, Mary, have you had a lot of experience with crafting? Are you? Um, it's okay so, if you haven't. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge crafter, but I have a four star armorer, and I mostly bought my way there. But most of my crafting, um, I just I really play the market. Like I'll, I'll see, okay. This is selling for a hundred thousand gil, and I can buy the materials for a thousand and make a ninety-nine thousand gil profit. And I just do that, and I make millions and millions and millions of gil without even blinking. Um, yeah. So I'm not so much a crafter in the sense of like doing like the really hard synths. I just like take advantage of markets where I can see them that are within my level to craft. Right. So, and so a lot of people dedicate themselves to this kind of stuff. Um, do you guys know anyone who are like dedicated crafters market? Uh, destroyers, I guess, is one way you could call them. An acquaintance, Ash. sort of. <laughs> yeah. Ash yeah. 10, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, uh, I, I'm actually going to bring up a point, and this was uh, brought up uh, by a couple of people. Actually, I'm gonna, they, they were brought up uh, from, I think it was on LBR, so I'm not going to take credit for Destroyer or anything. These guys were talking about it, and they wanted to put out some awareness about some people who are in the crafting community. Uh, and there is someone who is being harassed by, like, the the gangs of the crafting community, almost sound like. <laughs> and they were basically saying, hey, you better not make any of this stuff, or we're going to under find everything that you sell and undersell it. Every time you post something up, they'll find out their retainer names or whatever. But the thing is, mm -hmm. like, when you make something, it says made by, right? Yeah. And so you can kind of figure it stuff out. And so... Basically, they were going to go out there and undersell and undercut everything that they do to try to push them out because they were trying to push their way into the market. And so these people, like the cartels, yeah, the cartels of the, the <laughs> crafting world and the, the market board. And so, I mean, it's really bad. It's horrible uh, that people are out there doing it. But it's fascinating to it's, me it's, to it's, think that this exists. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, oh yeah, it's, people um, are savage. Very early on in Mar on Malbro, on like early early days of the games, like crafters made the world go round. Like I mean, they still have you know. I don't think crafting has the same level of impact on the game that it did when the game first came out. Mm -hmm. But there was there were free companies that were just made for crafters. Like they didn't care to invite people for raiding or anything. They're like, we're just going to be a crafting free company, and we're going to set the prices. We are going to be the ones to set the prices, and you guys are going to be the one to pay them. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. And that, that's... All right, so people are doing this stuff, and people are out there also, of course, like they, they buy something from an NPC and they sell it on the market board because the market board could be like the go-to place because uh, people don't like to look at, you know, uh, the wiki for where you can actually buy from an NPC. They'll just buy it mm -hmm. from whatever is on the market board, and they can make tons of gil off of that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> uh, but uh, to kind of talk about that a little bit more, too, is that since there's so much involvement that people are, are playing this game and dedicating their entire playtime to doing this, it's just another statement to how huge this MMO is, uh, where we are still blinded, the majority of the community is still blinded that we have to be out there and forced to raid, and that's really the whole point of it. Uh, it, it again, it's a, it's a world with all the dark sides to it and all the light sides to it uh, and everything else that can be done in this game. And that's a lot That's a lot more than you can say about other MMOs out there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, I mean, WoW is famously known for ruining their game by doing uh, uh, the, the garrisons. garrisons, right? Oh, the yeah. garrisons are horrible. Like, I'm, I'm actually playing it now to level to 100, and I'm actually, like, getting a taste of the garrisons, and I, I don't ever see another person. I really don't. Yeah. Like, the majority of people, like, they, they log on, they're in their garrison, they stay there, they queue from the garrison... Um, outside of maybe if I went to Ashran for one reason or another, which I don't really care to, that's the only other place in the world where I see people. Like it's it's they've they've taken everything out of like this. Um, 
and then maybe it's because I haven't played the game for a while, but I don't care to be in the WoW world outside of just questing. Mm-hmm. Like, I, if I'm questing and I'm seeing the new story, okay, all right. But the, I, I'm not, like, particularly attached and hanging out in one spot or checking out places or things like that. I do that a lot more with 14. I, I, I actually do. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, Garrison's fucking garrisons why yeah I, I i get i get it i get it there's there's probably a subsection of people it who play mmos amazing. who like farmville like really when you when that first came out i was like oh that sounds awesome this is something Bill, that i would want to do this is something i want to be part of but then they made it the thing that you ha- kind of had to do right it was, yeah. it was like here you go here's your little farm area and you just focus on that and you you don't experience the world anymore you don't mm-hmm. need them as much um so, yeah, and this is a comparison stream too, by the way. We compare well all the time. We like to throw our uh, thingies out and it's compare sizes. Really, it's a really big part of my of my MMO experience. So when I have to compare and contrast things that 14 uh, does, I have to use WoW. Yeah. Like, I, I've played other ones, but I've not really invested the time that I did in WoW. Yeah. So, so yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you were making a soft drink, you compare it to, like, other popular soft drinks, right? And mm-hmm. Yeah. Coca-Cola, things like that. Uh, no advertising for you guys. I, I don't. I don't get paid by Coca Cola or anything like this. But like, uh, <laughs> you should. Anyways, uh, if you need to make a comparison, Wow is the easy staple point. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna make. F- screw you, Complexity, for trying to make fun of us for talking about it and ruin <laughs> our show. No, I'm just kidding. I just wanted to make sure that uh, if anybody was actually seriously thinking of that anyway, I wanted to stomp it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, WoW does a great job at what it does in creating the world, and I feel like a lot of people are not going to experience that because they are disheartened by the fact that they have to get into the raid scene. And uh, I hope you guys understand. Maybe even after listening to ramble for the last hour or so, that there's endless content in this game to go out and do. It's not something mm-hmm. that you actually have to. Uh, uh, dedicate your time to if you really don't want to raid don't raid play an mmo because you want to play an mmo an mmo again raiding is a big part of the game that has this has evolved within mmos but it's not the mmo right it's not it's, yeah. it's not um heck if you like playing in your garrisons go play go play garrison like it, as much as i bash on it like the concept of a garrison sounds very warcraft it <laughs> reminds me of the rts games build your base yeah um which I thought was going to be mm-hmm. good, but um, everybody thought it was. Man, don't worry. I also thought that that was their answer to to housing because they've been wanting housing for a very long time. Yeah. And I will admit that people in fourteen also just hang out in front of their houses all the time too. Yeah. But at least you can still find people in Idleshire, right? Yeah. Or mm-hmm. if you're on Balmung in the quicksand. You know what? I completely forgot to talk to you guys, uh, the viewers here, before when we start the show. I forgot to ask everybody to ask questions. Uh, so, uh, Kerr is, by the way, in the chat, ready to collect any questions you have. So if you guys want us to throw a, a discussion point out there for us to talk about some, like when we go around it closer to the end of the show, uh, please ask questions. I can't believe I forgot to ask that. I was like halfway into it. I was already like so focused on just talking about the show, uh, that I didn't think to say that, but please guys, if you do have questions for the show at all, any questions at all, if you want to ask why Mary's hair looks so good, he could probably tell you that too, but you have to ask it. Okay. I'm not just going to, he does have incredible hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really good. Okay. Um, Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, but we can't, we can't go into that right now until if someone asks that, if no one asks that, then no one's ever going to find out the secrets of your hair. Yeah. Um, Of course. course. So yeah, ask anything you guys want and we'll definitely talk about it guys. Um, so I want, the next part I want to talk about is when we're going into it and we're not raiding, uh, how, and all these different things you can do, how much time do you guys actually play per week? And Pook, how, how much time do you invest in the game per week? I'm I'm playing maybe about f- fifteen to seventeen hours per week on average now, and um yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did we beard coordinate? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked there. No, it's save fine. that question for later. No, um, I, well I think I got the fullest one. Do I? Yeah, you can't call this a beard. This is just scruff. Because yeah, I don't really have the scheduled raid time, and um, it's really easy to cap right now. And it's it, it's a weird question to ask right now because uh, we're between patches. Mm-hmm. 
But if you'd asked me during a patch, how often do I play? Um, why am I on a talk show right now? I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Uh, except that's kind of the feeling that happens a lot of times. Like, as soon as uh, 3.2 came out, I'm not going to get a single raider on the show. Because every single <laughs> right. person is raiding. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be raiding. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that it does patch the patch. Because when the patch comes out, you see all the different things. And you're like, you're excited. You're like, I want to jump into this and play this. I want to do it. And so you are going to spend lots of more time. But after, like, the patch has been out for a while, you're kind of like, you know, you can spend a few hours to it. Uh, like, 10, 15 hours is a lot of time to spend on a game, though, right? I mean, that's not, like, a short amount of time. Especially, right. uh, for me, that's definitely not a short amount of time. That's, like, uh, about as much as I probably invest in the game every single week. Um, and I feel like people shouldn't feel like they're forced to play ridiculous amounts of time every single week to enjoy a game. Uh, you guys can spend however much time you want on it. But Mary, tell me, tell me how much time you spend. <sighs> That's a hard question to answer. Um, it just depends on the day, I guess. You know, I stream every single day, so some days, like, I try to do maybe an hour or two of fourteen, if not more. So, you know, I, I pretty much play it almost every day. Some days, like, if I have an off day, I might just, like, not play it at all. Um, I mainly only played on stream. I very rarely, like, played in my free time now. Um, but okay, a, a few hours a day. So, you know what, uh, Cryo or Kerr out there, if you guys wanted to throw together a straw poll and just put, like, a couple options in there, like, one to five hours, five to ten hours, ten, and just throw that in there. I'm kind of curious about everyone who's watching the show, how much time do you guys dedicate to Final Fantasy every single week? Uh, and then at the end of the show, we can go in that and maybe even if five people respond, to that, it'd still be interesting to find out what those five people do. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, that is, I know uh, I'm asking a little bit, but, uh, that would be interesting because I want to know how much you guys spend in the game currently right now, every single week, uh, when we're kind of in this little midpoint between patches. And so I, I spend, let's see, I honestly spend maybe... I'd say ten to fifteen hours. I'm online with Pook. Yeah. 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 That sounds about right for me too. Probably around there. Uh, although I do spend a lot of my time uh, raiding uh, with my raid group, and so I don't have a lot of time outside of that. I'm raiding in PvP. Uh, so I do a lot of PvP. Has really brought me in for a few more hours every single other day. Uh, so it's like either I raid or I do PvP in the game, and there's so much I'm losing out on because I've dedicated that time to those two factors in the game and so uh i i guess man this game is too massive holy crap guys now i'm thinking about it i i don't have everything up to 60 but i've been playing this game for years yeah uh, I, I just i just hit 60 on on everything and i stream it every day well, almost every day mostly every day i've actually been working a few other games in now but still um, I just hit 60 on everything, and my next challenge was like, okay, let's get everything to, to at least item level 200, and I did that. I don't have to spend SOs on anything anymore. I, I literally have bought everything with SOs you could buy. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. And so the next is, the next is okay, well, let's get, them all, let's get them all Midas gear, which is something I'm working on. And then this is kind of next thing, next thing, next thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that, that's, that's, that's my progression. That's how it goes for me. Man. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. I just kind of hit that. I was like, man, I I could probably play this game for the next 10 years if they released no other new content before I completed everything <laughs> with how much I play every week, uh, which is in, still insane. I just played uh, Evil Within, and, you know, it's a 15-hour long game. Well, I played it. It could have been a shorter game if I didn't die 100 times, but... Uh, you know, I played that, and it was a, not a great game. I, I, just to go ahead and tell you guys, it's not a great game. It's just a fun <laughs> game, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. I don't know yeah, how to really say that. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, I played that, and that was 15 hours. That was one week of what I spent in Final Fantasy. The entire game was one week of my Final Fantasy time. Um, so this game has been a huge part of my life, and, I, and that's not just because I'm streaming. I mean, before I was streaming, this game has been a huge part of my life. Um, mm. Outside of raiding and just getting to know other people, Um so again, another tangent went off crazy. Um, let's get into what we think uh, SE needs to do 
is SE doing a good job? Are they kind of failing in certain parts? I mean, we've, we've promoted them a lot throughout the show, but is there anything that they need to do to cater more towards non-raid content? Do you guys feel like there's some lacking points? Do they need to start, like, smoothing content out that's more yeah. casual or just kind of leave it the way it is? I, I he's got a, He's got something, but I'm going to interrupt him here. Okay. Add more glamour and minions to old content. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what. That's all I have to say. Is that what you were gonna say, Mary? I was gonna say fix the diadem. <laughs> I, Don't you every mean time the someone diadem? Says, everyone says diadem, uh, diadem, whatever. 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 Uh, fix, uh, fix it. Uh, but when people say that, uh, I forget it exists until someone yeah. says it. Yeah. It needs to. It's such it. They could do so much with it and make it so cool, but it's just sitting there floating in the sky off, off in everyone's memories. No one really – it's just – what are you doing with that? Just fix it. I mean how, how it, could they fix it? I'm, I've, there are some actually really cool ideas. So like they have the whole you know gathering and combat classes mixed thing and people are saying like there should be fates where you know maybe gatherers have to like gather stuff. And then the, the the disciples of war and magic have to mm-hmm. defend them from like waves of enemies and stuff like that. Like Hamlet. they could, yeah, or like kind of like one point Hamlet's like they could do a lot of cool things to the the diadem diadem. Um, I, I want to say about the diadem <laughs> something. I want to say that I miss the original grind, the Diablo ish feel when you got in there and it was just grind mobs for drops. I would have really liked instead of just there being dinosaur island or whatever. <laughs> that you were encouraged to move around maybe the tracks spawn somewhere else or maybe once you spawn tracks in a place you had to move to another place to spawn tracks there mm. or maybe where the mobs were on the map was randomized this island doesn't always have these mobs on it yeah. i think those sorts of things would have made it just a, a good grindy affair go in there for 90 minutes find where the mobs are that you want to kill maybe they move Maybe they migrate. Maybe there's little events that happen. Maybe the events don't always happen. Maybe there are rare spawns. All right. And just go in there and just just grind away for 90 minutes and and go. Should you be forced to do it for 90 minutes, though? Should it be something that you can kind of go in and out? No, of? you can you can leave early. I, I think you should be able yeah. to leave early. But I think if you want to, if you really want the diadem to be, you know, I. I I, I hate the fact that they nerfed the drop rate and the spawn rate and all that so yeah. early on because the 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 almost mindless grind was the good part. Like drag in seven of your friends, grind the hell out of shit, put on good music and just just hang out and have fun. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think another cool thing that they could do adding on to what you said earlier, Pook, is add new glamours and minions in there. Give people a reason to go in there. Add, you know, even just like little things to do. Because I feel like they they built up like this great foundation. Now they just got to put some content on it, and it'll be a good thing for just kind of casual gameplay, you know. Or they could just make it to where if you kill gorillas, you get some sort of special gorilla drop that would never happen with gorillas, and it's like rare and it sells for a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, or things You're like that for each one, those. each set of mobs. Then you know they had their own little things that could be cool. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna hit another tangent because that for some reason has popped into my head, and I, I want to get it out of my head before I forget about it because we were talking about fashion shows, right? Mm-hmm. completely off topic of everything we're talking about right now but what if they did a uh, organized fashion show once per day and then people would go up and uh basically they could enter the fashion show and only a set amount of people could do it i guess you'd have to register for it beforehand but you'd go up there i don't know how they would really plan that out and the person would go up for 10 seconds hey look at me this is me and then players could go to an npc and say i vote for this person that would be great all right I cool. like that yeah. Uh, I, it could be I, abused. I think, I think it could you could be. use a place like the quicksand and put up a stage and also have a uh, level 70 or <laughs> level 80 or whatever they are, the elite or in chiefter, <laughs> chieftain band. Yeah. yeah. Let's have the yeah. band perform. I mean, yeah. what? <laughs> oh, it's just like they did. Again, let's do our WoW comparison, right? Uh, yeah. uh, the level 70 uh, ETC, TC. elite yeah. 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 or in chieftain uh, would always go out there and rock every hour or so. Put it in the gold saucer. Make it a gold saucer gate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, no, that would be good too. Yeah. And if people can go out there and just vote, and the only thing is that you would have to kind of like moderate it at some point and make it to where it can't be abused, where this FC couldn't just bring all their members and just vote for one person every time. But yeah, uh, there's ways to do it. Okay, yep. so my idea is gone. It's as out of my head. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, so, do you guys? And I was going to ask another question. If you guys ever felt like you're going to run out of things to do, but there's no point in asking that question. 
Because you guys aren't going to run out of things to do. Nah. I, I actually ran nah. out of things to do... Mm, never. Never? Okay. Never. Yeah. I've been playing this game for like six years. Almost yeah. six years. And... Uh... I still have a lot to do. So he he not, he not only has played it for six years, he plays it thirty hours a day. Yeah, thirty hours. a and day. And if you guys finish everything that you are doing, go do diadem. There's probably stuff you could do there. Absolutely. <laughs> There's so much in diadem. I bet you could do hunting hawk. I mean, what? Yeah, um, yeah. That doesn't exist. <laughs> you can go do sightseeing logs. I'm sure you haven't done that. Yeah. Uh, I you got know how some. long it took me to uh, unlock the challenge log? When when are we gonna? When are we gonna get some wow. airship PvP? When are we gonna get like Guns of Icarus style airship I on they were airship gonna PvP? Do stuff with that. Yeah, I honestly, me know, too. When, when they started off with airships, I thought they were gonna say, "All right, the airships are flying there, and you might encounter a boss while you're flying to that area, and then you guys had to fight them." I thought that was a part of it, but I don't know. Maybe they they still have a lot to introduce with airships, and maybe we need to actually pull back from diadem and stop calling it diadem. We need to just call it airship content, right? Right, right. And yeah. they said they've had plans for it. So I suppose that um remember remember there's this really big talk like right before Heavensward came out that throughout three the whole three point X series, the airship was just gonna gradually grow into something more and more and more and more. So is three point three our next update? Because I don't remember the last time we got something new with the airships. Yep. Yeah. They said something about like, oh, you'll be able to, you know, pick someone to steer it. And like, who's gonna? Yeah. When's that coming? When are we? When are we gonna be able to ride them and drive them around and shoot get cannons by, off the side? Yeah, get attacked yeah. by sky pirates or whatever. Yeah. When's that gonna happen? Bahamut reborn. Bahamut yeah. reborn just flies in and lands next. Like, like that would be amazing. The There's a one percent yeah. chance that you could get into a fight similar to T13. You know, you know what game did that? Hmm. Maple Story. Don't talk to me about Maple While Story. While taking <laughs> the airship between continents, you could be attacked. Maybe there was we'll a boss. Yeah, I couldn't get into 11? that game because the background looked exactly like the places that like I couldn't <laughs> couldn't make a difference between what I could walk on and what was the background. Right, right. And it drove drove me insane. I instantly left the game. Uh, but that was so long ago, so long ago. Kerr got into it really hard. Um, okay, so kind of bring this back a little bit here. And again, guys, anyone in chat that has a question, uh, two things: vote in the time the straw bowl, uh, uh, straw bowl, uh, straw poll. Uh, that Cryo and Kerr are putting up there for how much time you actually put in the game, and we'll go over that at the end of the show. And also, if you have questions, again, about anything that we've talked about so far today or anything that you think that you would like us to talk about, uh, that's as you, you can't make it too lewd. You can make it a little lewd if you really want to. Uh, ask those questions, and we'll go over that here in just a bit. Uh, I want to ask you guys, with what your experience with raiding and uh, your lack of desire to it kind of turn into where you guys are right now with it, do you see yourself ever going back in to raiding in game content? Pook. For me, it would probably have to be um, less formal. But I could see myself doing it in a less formal kind of setting. Mm -hmm. um, when they talked about having the lobbies for, you know, setting up groups and stuff like that, they also talked about the fact that, you know, having basically cross-server raid finder um, where you could you know make a pre-made with people from other servers and go in. I would probably do it in that way with groups that were a little bit more lax. Um, and I would do it as something as like, okay, I'm gonna go hop into the lobby and see if there's anybody doing it right now, as opposed to here's my set schedule, here's our progress. Like, no, I would probably just go in and and raid finder it. That's that's how I would do it. Okay, so you would be up for it if uh, the party finder was kind of like how they do on Chuckabo. Where it's like organized, this this part here, you know this part, this is where you're learning, we understand you're learning, and everyone just stays for the entire group to try to get to that point. Right. All right. And so that kind of structure where you people are getting off work or whatever, they're coming home, and they're like, I don't want to make a group because I don't know, sometimes I have to stay out late, sometimes I don't. And you can just jump into a group that is in that. And they're doing that. I think they're, they're creating that. The first thing they're implementing, I think it's in 3.35, is the raid finder portion right. of all this, right? Right, and then the uh, the other the other company CEO, the Yokai Watch guy, asked, "When are we going to get Party Finder that can be seen cross server?" Mm -hmm. And you know, she's like, "Okay, if you want that, we'll work on that too." Yeah, and that's three point five. That's three point five. Yeah. yeah, and so three point three five, which is around the corner, uh, and they're going to probably have a live letter on it again soon, is going to have uh, a structured version of what uh, we learned that the JP guys kind of do. 
uh, with their party finder on the bigger servers. And so uh, that's really interesting to see how that will work out for uh, the NA service. As long as it's you know going between the entire data center, it should be okay. Um, I can't wait to see how many Rick Astley lyrics get posted in the cross server party finder. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know yeah. someone's going to do it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, is it 3.3? I thought it was 3.35. No, 3.35 is the, uh, isn't the the endless dungeon or the deep dungeon thing. Is that what I got it mixed up on? Yeah, and the, the actual party finder is 3.3. And the live letters on May 22nd. Yeah, that we were just yep. reminded yep. of. So yep. I'm completely too. sorry for that misinformation. You guys should have corrected me. What stopped you, Pook? I actually was believing the same thing until okay. someone pointed it out like i was like wait i didn't actually question it until it was questioned okay mary why uh, didn't you stop me because i'm an awful person that's why i got you on the show man i gotta balance yeah. you out with the best person pook <laughs> all right so anyways yeah so 3.3 we're going for that that's exciting to hear that it's gonna be even that much sooner uh and i should notice stuff because i actually had a show on a live letter just uh, last week but that's okay that's okay guys and so, um, Mary, did you, you didn't actually go on if you were ever going to get back into rating, did you? Uh, no. Okay. Um, so I feel like if I ever got back into rating, mm -hmm. the, the min maxer in me wouldn't let me do it casually. Like I, I couldn't just like go at it. Oh my God, Pook. <laughs> it's, just, it's just stabbing you. Wow. Maybe Ow. Pook's the dark one here. Ow. Give me a bandage. Um, but, uh, I just, I couldn't do it. Like even, even in my casual play now that I'm not a, a hardcore raider, my min maxing still like bleeds through whenever I'm playing my warrior. Like sometimes I'll just like right click defiance off my hot bar because I'm like, I'm never going to use this. I'm not always going to be <laughs> deliverance. I need to do DPS. Um, and so like it, it just bleeds over into my casual play. And I feel like if I went back into raiding, I would just, I would have to be, I'd have to go hard at it and i just don't have the time to anymore or the the drive so okay hopefully not so you're always going to be in the non-reading scene probably probably unless something changes for now right. i gotcha okay so uh even if the difficulty was adjusted and they made it like easier or is it uh yeah probably because i'd still want to be like i'm getting server first or i'm getting maybe yeah. world first probably not but I feel like it ties into that question from earlier. It's just that the mentality comes with the content. It's just like yep. the people in PvP exactly. that want to be the absolute very best. Right. Um, like no one it, ever was. It's, yeah. yeah. Right, that's to, to, to catch them is, well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. We, can, we don't have to keep going. We can just yeah. keep it. I think most people <laughs> got it. No, no. no. Uh, and so, but Pook, you said you'd get into it if the, it was able to do kind of a raid finder content. So there's a possibility you might get back into it. Right. I just I, I, I don't I don't think I need I, I I need the ability to raid outside of my FC, which is already exists through statics, but I also don't want the the schedule, the the uh I, I just want to go in and just fuck around. Like <laughs> I do. Sometimes sometimes I'll just join CephX learning parties. I still I don't have a CephX clear. I don't actually have a Thornton X clear. Like that's how out Aww. of Raging yeah, me I am. neither. Really? Yeah. 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 Do you guys want to make a group and we can do that as soon as cross servers out? Well, Let's do it. Um, data centers issues. I'm not on the same one as Mary. I know that. He's on Ether. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm with you, Pook. I think we're. Yeah, we're I think primal, we're both right? on Primal. Yeah. Eh, well, Mary doesn't matter. It's okay. Uh, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> I'm not just a casual, and I'm not even just a filthy casual. I'm actually a hyper casual. <laughs> Like, I, am, I am so casual that other casuals look at me and go, wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. I can see that. Book. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't go. Puke? No, I, I wasn't. Not even Puke, close. Bukajitsu. Book. Bukajitsu. Book. Book. Uh, Bukajitsu is my favorite. I, I still like that a lot. Okay. And so I guess the other question I have is if all this is going on and you're still doing the same way that you're playing the game, do you ever see yourself actually stopping final fantasy 14 in the foreseeable f future no 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 nope. neither no been playing for six years have not ever let my sub drop since it came up i don't see that stopping anytime soon you know i i kind of i agree so i don't see myself in that position at all um i will say i can relate that again let's let's bring it back to wow that i didn't see myself ever really stopping playing wow 
until hit expansion. I was like, this is a little bit not fun. And then it just kind of progressed. I was like, I can probably see myself stop. You see that. Like you kind of, I, or at least I felt like I did. I, I, every expansion, I kind of saw that I was going to not be as interested more and more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not even close to that point with Final Fantasy. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the guy that the elitist on the, on all the social media sites hates. I am the guy that is looking really forward to the 3.3. I look forward to the off patches. I am like, yay, new 24 man. Yay, deep dungeon. These are things that I'm going to invest myself in. They have nothing to do with raiding. I am the person that's like, you're okay waiting six months for new Alexander because in those three months, I get content. <laughs> I don't care about <laughs> yeah. your content. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we've talked about this. There's an easy solution to fix the r- hardcore raiding scene. Really easy solution with the six-month uh, drag in between. It's just achievements uh, for doing things in different styles. Like, uh, yep. you know, not dying in a fight, not... Uh, having all the ads up but when you're not supposed to have all the ads up things like that you can add these achievements and they're satisfied you don't have to do anything else uh even if it was just like a title and then maybe a mount every once in a while if it's something really ridiculous or just little small things you can just throw those in you don't have to create new content you just have to add a flag in there saying yes they did this they get this uh, this title and we're done and so uh, it it hopefully will happen I, i would love to ask you know i don't know if anyone's ever asked that of yoshi in any interviews i can remember but fan fest fan fest there we go man mog talk at fan fest is going to be epic are oh, you doing one at fan fest gotta do it at fan fest man we're gonna do it and oh, we're gonna fan fest. i'm gonna get a verizon uh oh, damn it why do i say company names i don't support these people all right anyways i'm gonna get like a verizon so hotspot yeah i got really loud really loud I'm serious. That's why I, you know I'm serious. Then. Oh, okay. absolutely. All right. So I'm gonna get a hot spot, and then I'm gonna get my, a laptop or something, and then I'll I'll stream from it, and we'll stream live from it. We'll That'd be cool. Beer. I'll buy you a beer at FanFest. Maybe we'll do like Mog Talk episode, whatever it is. By that point, VIP room, and everyone that's been on there will just come in, and we'll all be hanging out in a room and drinking beers, and uh, not drinking beers for whatever, just having fun. I, I would be up for it. I will rent a room. Uh, and we'll just dedicate it to that. But uh, anyways, I wish I could sell out, guys. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> before we get into... Well, actually, let's let's just check out the questions. Let's take a little sneak peek over here and see if we've actually developed some questions here. We, we, we got some questions. Uh, all right, so uh, the very first question, and this is a, the, a really good one. Uh, Art Persona, uh, what hair product does Mary use? Give me... Uh, move on to another question. Give me like 10, 15 seconds. Oh, he's gonna let's deliver. find out. He's gonna deliver. Oh, he's going to deliver. He's going to go get it. Okay. I'm okay with that. Um, let's see. I have to, there's a lot of Mary by, questions by here. By the way, Hold on. He, he's a hair elitist. <laughs> hair elitist? Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. He is the elitist of hair. I, I got to see what product that is, and maybe I need to switch to it. Uh, all Sponsorship, right. guys. Sponsorship. Guys, get ready for it. I use uh, red... Ken. Red Ken. How much does that cost? I don't know. My roommate gave it to me. <laughs> oh, that's sweet of him. But uh her. But yeah. Oh. It works. Hey, sweet. Works good. Okay. Keeps my hair nice and <laughs> nice and, nice fresh. and like <laughs> Yeah, it's just kinda Perfect. Uh everyone listening uh, to this on audio are gonna be like, Man, I wish I watched this in a video so they could see what <laughs> your hair looks like. Remember, uh, Red Ken, yeah. for business inquiries, you can reach Frosty at <laughs> at final yeah. fan or frosty f f x i v at gmail.com there you go we're there done you go. uh okay so next question here is did we coordinate of course we, we talked about this a little bit complexly wanted to know if we coordinated our beards today and we did not no oh, no this is no. this is uh this is all uh coincidental beard yeah coordination this is all because our faces look relatively okay with ha- facial hair on it and mm-hmm. so that's why it's there um it's not there because i think beards are cool it's there because i think beards look uh, it looks okay on me it's not bad and i look a lot different without the beard um, oh we we actually there's going to be a special episode coming up where we're we're going to do a middle middle school dance episode and we're all three just going to shave <laughs> it's going to be I, super awkward and great oh yeah i have 
extreme baby face without any facial hair. So I have to keep some level, whether, whether it's just stubble or like scruff or something, like it has right. to be there. And also, Kerr stops talking to me if I shave my beard. That's the other thing. Uh, yeah, there's that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Shadowfire, Mary, why do you look like Snowden? How often do you get that? Very often. You very often. Hang on. So <laughs> I got these glasses, right? And my yeah. new glasses. Great. I look like a 25-year-old adult like I'm supposed to. But if I take these off and I put on my old glasses, which are sitting on my desk anyways. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Done. Uh, when are you, when you going to give the next leak? Can't talk about that. Can't talk about that? Okay, we're not the Guardian. Yep, that's a, that's a secret. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. Uh, next question. Yeah, none of us play Paladin. And I think this was kind of answered... <laughs> Good. Uh, I think this was kind of answered uh, uh, a little bit earlier when we talked about the hair product, but they wanted to know what the secret uh, to your hair was, and this was from Jim Link, and that was... Uh... So, yeah, I use this. What I do is, right, is you take, like, a... It's like a... It's not a gel. It's like a weird, like, cream, right? Well, there's, okay. like, nothing in yeah, there. Yeah, I got not much left. I got to get some more. But um, just get, like, a little bit on my fingers and just kind of push it back and then sweep it over and... Yeah, I do, I do that kind of too, right? And it's kind of, just kind of, because yeah. if I, see, if I don't use hair product, I have like really thick hair and it just like <laughs> poofs out. And so I have to like flatten it down and swoop it over. Otherwise I have like a big poofy. Pook, I love the little rascals thing that you guys have. Yeah, it's sticking up in the back now because of the headset. Like the headset just ruins the back of my head. Look at that. It's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so right now, by the way. We uh we have turned into hair talk as they have mentioned in chat. Yeah. Uh, so we might skip over some of the hair talk questions here for just here's, a bit. Here's another thing bit. to do. Uh, you can get you can get visit the esthetician and get yep. your hair done. Yep. Here you get your hair did. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So dude and Antonio is actually talking about something that's uh completely off uh off the wall here uh, about samurai and if it was officially announced, do you think it should be a tank or DPS class? Tank. 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 You guys are all thinking tank. You don't think it should I want be a tank. DPS? I want a tank. But there's already tanks are fine. They need to put a a new DPS class in, right? I want to tank things with a katana. That'd be cool. Okay. Yeah, tank would be great for samurai. I think that it makes much sense for the samurai to be tank. They were kind of like heavy armor, the yeah. big crazy samurai stuff. Yeah. But Dark Knight was kind of. I guess it was okay to make it a tank, but it was everyone wanted it to be a DPS, right? I wish it was a DPS, and I wish samurai was the tank. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, you know, they're going to announce all this stuff at FanFest, so we don't got to worry about it. What yep. if they gave us specs and it had a DPS spec oh. and a tank spec? Oh, so you you want to go full-blown yes. uh, WoW there, right? Yeah, cool. I don't know if I want to go like talent trees as much as I want to go like variations of the abilities, kind of like the stances are now. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Oh, you know, this actually follows up really well with uh, Complexity's question. Is uh, what are your thoughts on specializations in Final Fantasy fourteen? I don't know if you're talking about crafting specializations, or if you're talking about specializations that I'm thinking about, that which we were just talking about a second ago, right? Where you can actually I want say talent you're... trees. You want talent trees? Okay, that'd be um, awesome. I would like to see um. As you level classes or jobs or whatever they want to call them and unlock abilities, that you basically just add those abilities to the pool of abilities and you build a class by picking which abilities you use. Maybe there could be limits on it like, you know, this ability costs this many points, so you can't take this one with this one, so you don't get, like, completely overpowered. But if you want to be a paladin who focuses a little bit more on healing than it does on, you know, um, its survivability, then you could do that and, you know... Add a f add, make the fourth role in a four man party a support. Make the eight man have two supports or hybrids, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them. All right. And this person's like, okay, I'm tanking on this today, or I actually just want to play warrior for the damage. I've taken I've taken a certain stance off my bar. My name is very merry. <laughs> um, I would rather see that than a talent tree sort of thing. And you maybe couldn't just change it in the middle of a fight or even in the middle of the instance. But if you, you know, at the start of the night prepped for this is the role I'm filling, then that would be kind of cool. I, I think I'd rather see that than, than talent trees. And it would kind of have that Final Fantasy job flavor to it. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about, 
about this a little bit on the 50th episode. Actually, it was like the last segment that we were talking about. Uh, I forget exactly what it was called. What we called it. But it was a lot of different things where we were combining different roles. Like if you took like a, a certain specialization for someone else, and you can actually turn your character in kind of a little more of a tanky character or something like that. But um, And that would be interesting. But they said they're moving mm-hmm. away from it, so our hopes should be dashed, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so Mad Marky wanted to know, I'm going to let uh, Mary answer this question. Uh, first, uh, with the Yokai uh, watch crossover happening soon, what other crossovers do you want to see within the game? Uh, Ooh. Yeah, I see all his like excitement, but he's like, he has to be second for it. So I'm really excited about the PSO2 crossover that's coming. I'm actually going to be streaming that when that comes out. So if you want to see that. And I loved uh, Fantasy Star Online. Uh, it, so PS2, and I'm sorry, we're, we're dropping off Final Fantasy again. Yeah. Is this a... Is it just like Fantasy Star, where you have like four people in a group and you go into it? Is there like an uh, MMO? It's it's a it's kind of like Monster Hunter. It's like it's like a it's like a space version of Monster so Hunter. So it is. So it's like kind of like the original. Yeah, yeah. It it's it's. I'd say it's it's pretty similar. Um, you can have a lot more than four people. Like you can have up to sixteen in some cases, but for the most part, um, it's like kind of small groups. But um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a fun game. It's only in Japan right now. Uh, it's if you you can play with like an English patch on it, um, so it's not perfect, but um, like it's it's a it's a it's a really fun game, and the the PSO two crossover looks really cool. Like Odin looks just like he does in fourteen. Like the fight, the mechanics, it looks awesome. So I'm excited for that. Um, but one that's not coming that I want to come is Final Fantasy twelve. Final Fantasy twelve, a game that like almost not a lot of people play. I love 12. I want a both year outfit. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get through 12. 12 was kind of interesting when I first got into it, but I don't know, something happened, and I guess another game came out and it took my attention away. Um, uh, that's pretty interesting, because I think 12, 12 is one of the... Is it one of the most least liked Final Fantasies? I feel like it's it's pretty big. Yeah. Um, I mean, people really like the world. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, the world is good because you get the bunny ears and stuff, right? Yeah, Ivelisse. Yeah. The Moogles are like actual playable characters, you know? I'm sure you'd They're love in that. Final Fantasy fourteen too. I mean, I play one. Uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. You're yeah. super yeah. swole, too. Yeah. Swole Moogle. Yeah. Oh, man. We could, we could easily get lost in favorite Final Fantasy talk, and oh, yeah. that will that will definitely mm-hmm. uh, bring about some some... Uh, division in the chat. Yeah, for we'll sure. start having like oh, yeah. throwing rocks at each other. So we'll get off <laughs> um, that topic for now. But I, yeah. I would say that, of course, I want. I'm looking forward to the 15 crossover. I want to know what they're doing with that. Um, I hope Kingdom Hearts gets one. Um, I would love to see a Final Fantasy 12 HD, just so they could do an HD, just a promotion for it in 14. Um, I want to see the you know, our side of the PSO2 stuff for sure. But mm. most importantly. I think it would be phenomenal if they can actually work with Blizzard and get a WoW crossover. After all this banter back and yeah. forth on Twitter and everything, yeah. like I don't even know yeah. what they would do. I don't know what they would do, but I would just love to see it just for the – because it seems like the Japanese companies are much more willing to reach out to each other and do these things. It's like what is PSO2 doing in Final Fantasy and vice versa? But, you know um, – yeah. Mm-hmm. Not so much over here on this side of things. It would be, I think, it would be, it'd be interesting just to see. I mean, I don't know if it would give us anything good, but yeah. And it's kind of interesting that they put this into the game as well because it's like promoting other games. Like, we're all friends. Let's just say, hey, we're friends. Uh, go play this game. It's interesting, right? Play this game. It's interesting. And so that's kind of cool that they're jumping in uh, between each other like that. Mm-hmm. And they're not greedy, and they're not saying no. All the guys are, yeah. all, all the players are my my players. But because if they go over to a different game. It kind of gives Final Fantasy guys a little bit of a break and not as pressured to come out of new content forced out as quickly as possible because the players are a little bit more spread out with their interest and in kind of going back and forth. But anyways, different topic, different show. Let's go mm-hmm. in. That was a good question, Mad Markey. Uh, let's go into the next question here. Uh, Jim Link wanted to know a question for Pook. Uh, how is Yildesire? I don't know. What, maybe, maybe. Did you ever say Yildesire? It was like a Y at the beginning of it. Why Desire? I don't know. Maybe he just What's misspelled it. it. Yeah, he, I think he spelled Idleshire. <laughs> Make Marlboro great again. Uh, Facebook campaign going on. 
so so this is this is just a bit of server drama that's hilarious. Okay. And I think it's finally blown over. Um, but it was about a Facebook page and then a competing Facebook page uh, because of differences in play style and opinion. Okay. And it poured over into Party Fighter and into a big movement in Idleshire and a bunch of people just gathering up there and shouting things at each other back and forth and lining up their chocobos against each other. And, um, yeah. And... So make Malboro great again, apparently. <laughs> For Cora knows about it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's a lot of those going out right now, right? Yeah. It's like the, the thing that you guys over at Dream Team are doing right now. Make every server great, guys. We got to make every yeah, server make great. great. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so next question is, uh, our persona wants to know where that sword is from, Pook. Uh, that sword is from Amazon.com for like eight bucks. It is very plastic, very cheap, and it is there to. Uh, it's there. <laughs> I don't know what it's there for. Is it there to knight people for? Yeah, I knight I knight people when they sub on my stream, but I don't know why I thought to buy the sword. I, I just you. like whatever. The sword is just a sword. Yeah. All right. Uh, our person also. Well, I, why would you? Okay, do you guys want to invade North Korea? That was the question. Oh, there's a Snowden question. So that's for you, Oh, Mary. was it Was it a Snowden question? Mm. Yeah? Uh, I plead the fifth. Okay. Plead the fifth. We don't want to make anyone in uh, North Korea mad at us. Yeah. Okay, because they probably watch this show. You've been banned from our... Uh... Uh, Pongyang or Pong... Yeah. 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 Something? yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And Jim Link... Has a question here. The most important question: uh, Honey yellow or metallic purple? Where did metallic, metallic purple. purple come from? Metallic purple. Um, it's kind of every every person in my FC oh. for like a week. Um, in, insisted on being members of the cult of metallic purple. Why not both? A good mix. Nice health. I healthy think mix. I yeah. think yeah. you actually have to. Vikings. I think I think with metallic yellow or not metallic yellow that would be a really that's yeah. gold. Yeah. Um, but with honey yellow, you have to achieve a certain level of skill. Like you can only be like be Miu and wear honey yellow. <laughs> like basically, Miu is so good at Miu playing. Yeah, Miu. Yeah. yeah, he's so good at playing what he plays, right? Mm -hmm. That he can get away with wearing whatever he wants to wear. Therefore, honey yellow. Definitely shouts out to me, Uni. He's a <laughs> he's an awesome guy. I love having him on the show. Um, okay, so I actually want to check that poll. Can someone uh, link that poll for me again? Because I completely lost it here. I probably should have clicked on the link or something from earlier. Uh, but yeah, link that poll. I kind of want to see what the results from that front were. Actually, uh, my last question to you guys is actually: uh, if there are players who don't raid in the game. Do you guys have a general like message that you would want to say to these players? Oh, it's in my damn document. Okay. Poop, you want to go? <laughs> I got one. <laughs> no, yeah. go ahead. So, if you don't raid, my words to you are, depending on whether or not you're a solo player or you like playing with friends, just make memories. Have fun. Do something you wouldn't normally do. Maybe you want to go do turn five and you only have uh, a couple tanks and a dragoon. Just do it. See what happens, you know? Just just go at it. Um, sometimes maybe you're like, I have nothing to do. Just make your own fun. Try something that you just wouldn't think of. And you'd be surprised at the fun you can have and the memories you can make and the friends you can meet. So just like do something weird. Do something different. Do something weird is always a good statement. Go, go pony farm with level one weapons equipped. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Like, or you know, make it make a wheel and spin it. <laughs> make a wheel and spin it. Yeah, that's something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the wheel. Um, I, I actually I'm going to take both sides of this and say that if you haven't, if you're not raiding in the game because you haven't wanted to try raiding because maybe you've been intimidating, intimidated, not intimidating. Oh well, <laughs> if you're intimidating as well, uh, stop that. <laughs> like, um. <laughs> Give it a try. See if it's your thing. And don't discount the game if it's not your thing because there's plenty of other things to do in the game. And don't let anyone convince you that you have to raid to play the game. No. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, of course, just going to add on if uh, do what you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. 
Yeah. I mean, you'll live, live a happy life. Like, words to live by. Yeah. Uh, so the results are in from this about how long people play. It seems like the number one uh, is one to ten hours. Uh, most everyone uh, plays one to ten hours, but that only one at 34% of the four options there are. We have second up, 10 to 20 hours at 29% with 12 votes. Uh, and 30 plus hours at uh, 27 votes. But only four votes are 20 to 30 hours. It seems like something happens between there. Either you're playing up to 20 hours or 30 more hours. You don't play 20 to 30 hours, apparently. Right? It's just an awkward spot. Either you go all in or you go in just kind of in and that's it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, okay, guys, I think that pretty much wraps up everything else that we have for the show. We got through a lot of questions here. I think we had a really good topic uh, to talk about today, just uh, jumping into all these things that will open up. This, is, this should be our uh, content page of Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3 of things that you can do when uh, not raiding. Then later we're going to have episodes. It's going to be Chapter 1. This is stuff that you could do when you're not raiding. Gold Saucer, Chapter 2, Crafting, Chapter 3, this. And we'll, we'll, we'll go more into it later on. Uh, I think this was a good overview on all that stuff. I really appreciate you guys coming into the show. Um, are there any last thoughts that you guys want to put out in regards to this topic in general? I feel, feel like we kind of capped it off pretty well there, but anything else you want to throw out that maybe I should have mentioned that I didn't? Um... No, nope, it's perfect, mode. right? Do man, mode. Do, man mode. Do man mode. Okay. Do man mode. It's fun. Man mode. Level warrior. If you guys have a level warrior, just go do it. It's fun. Yeah, level warrior. It's so even fun. If, even if you don't like tanking, level warrior. Yeah. It's blue DPS. It's a blue it's, yeah. DPS. <laughs> blue DPS. It's fun. Warriors are do- tons and tons yeah. of fun. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let's do shout outs. Mary, who do you want to shout out? I want to shout you guys out, for starters. Thanks for having me on the show again. It was a blast. I always love it. Of course. Um, uh, I guess Pook here for being awesome, helping me ease into this whole uh, streaming community. Mr. Happy, MTQ, Sly, mm-hmm. the whole crew. Whole Everyone's crew. so welcoming. Everyone's so welcoming. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, all right. Well, Pook, any shout outs? For other people, huh? Oh, no, yeah. I'm kidding. You know, shout out yourself, man. Say, yeah, shout out to me. Yeah, I mean, like, shout out to me. I'm the yeah. best person shouting you out right now. No, yeah. um, no, I, I have to say that the community makes this game. And, like, that's true about a lot of MMOs, but the community truly makes this game, even the streaming experience and everything like that. Um, if, um, I, there's yeah, uh, just there's there's so many people that have been so welcoming and supportive, and absolutely entertaining. And there's people that have you you've invited me on the show five times now, five Has it times. Been five times? Yes, five times. I don't even I don't even fucking that's raid. That's almost like uh, almost ten percent of all my shows, man. <laughs> yeah, this is the <laughs> yeah. I don't, the I don't even raid, and you brought me on the show five times, and you put out you put out a damn. A damn good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use my swear words. I'm gonna. You put out a damn good show. You do. You put out quality content. Damn. Um, I, I. I'm happy to read about it every week, even if I don't get to watch every episode. Um, and uh, that's just another, just a staple of this you know, really great community. Um, and if I have to name names, and I have to, you know, thank my team. You know, Happy Miss Tech, Sly, Raze, everybody over there, Mary for for also kind of encouraging me. And uh, and yeah, and the people that are in chat right now spamming Juan Juan because Milo is an amazing guy yeah. who I really miss. Yeah, Milo, free, uh, free, free Milo. Yeah, free Milo, twenty sixteen. Uh, he's busy with his new job that he has, but uh, I've talked to him recently, and we'll probably get him on the show here again uh, soon, not too far away, because um, he's going to he's hopefully back into the the game. It's just going to be a little bit more sporadic. Uh, always miss that guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, because, you know, when I first saw the stream, I was like, man, this guy is annoying. Uh, he just jumps <laughs> in there. He just, like, just shouts. I'm like, I'm tired of this. Uh, but, you know, he just keeps that hype up. And that's what he wants to do with his stream, and it's great. Yep. Uh, and when I've talked to him, like, just off stream, off everything, and, you know, I've talked to him. He, he's a very serious person that has some very serious stuff to talk about. And he gets really mm-hmm. deep into some topics, and I think it's really cool. Yeah, He's got uh, that stream personality. Yeah. 
Uh, so, anyways, guys, I want to also thank you guys for coming on the show, of course, because you guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, every time I have you on here, I'm really happy because I get to hang out with you guys. Um, also, shouts out to the viewers who are watching the show, everyone that's watching it on YouTube, everyone that's watching it right now, everyone that's going to listen to it on Podomatic. Uh, I appreciate you guys, everyone that's downloaded from iTunes. You guys have been great with supporting me, and I, that's all I ever ask for is uh, your attention, and I appreciate it every single time. Uh, shout out, of course, to Carrara, who collected questions, uh, Cryo helping mod the chat today and collecting those results for us, and uh, Kerr, of course, putting that straw poll in a very uh, easy-to-access location that I completely overlooked. I thank you for that very much. Uh, also, Blizzana for the artwork and the music from Tari, who made that for the intro song, uh, who every single time we like post this up, someone's like, hey, where's that song at? Where do you get it? I'm like, nowhere. Somebody made it for the show, man. It's gone. And they don't want they don't want you to download it. They just want you to listen to it on the show. Uh, and it's really awesome that they made it for us. Uh, and also, next week, guys, if you're going to watch Mog Talk, it's going to be the exact same time, uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, sometime GMT. I, I used to think it was 2200, but it Daylight Savings Time just screwed with my mind, and people have told me various different things. I think it's 2200 GMT, but uh, it could be that. We're going to have uh, Ms. Tech on the show next week. Uh, Ooh, what? Yep. Uh, also, we've had her on the show only one other time, and it was actually when I was dealing with a lot of frame rate issues, and I felt really bad about it. But we're going to bring her back on. We're actually going to bring on uh, another guest here that uh, I don't have confirmed, so we'll wait on that. Um, and we're going to discuss the inner workings. We're going to go flip back over, and we're going to talk about the static relations between uh, people, kind of when you join a group, uh, kind of how you work with the other members in there and how all that turns out. Sometimes people come in with bad attitudes, and they're like, F you, and they're like that every single time. And how people deal with that, maybe people want to deal with that. Maybe people don't want to deal with that like i don't want to but we're going to talk about all the kinds of static relations um the next thing that i want you guys to also do for me is tell me if there's someone that is streaming right now that should be hosted um it's going to be uh, a really cool really cool host if you guys would like to pick it for me because i hate picking host i'm gonna shoot you a link Shoot me a link. Oh, you know, also, that reminds me real quick. I'm going to post this in chat. If you guys wanted to investigate a little bit more into non-raid content and what the community feels like, uh, don't don't upvote this. I don't want you guys to upvote it. I don't want to try to promote that at all. I want to give you access to the comments because I posted that up the other day, and people uh, had a lot of good information in there. I mean, even if you upvote it, it's not going to happen. It's an old post, but um, it is a lot of really cool non-raid discussion on people and what they're doing in the game right now. Okay, so you... Okay, that's a maybe. Mary? Um... Do you have any maybes for us? I'm looking. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Alright, maybe. Maybe. I don't know, Pook, who do you got? I, you I linked him. You link, oh, he yeah. linked me. Oh, it's done. Oh, okay, okay. Here, let me, let me click on this. It's kind of a newer streamer right now. I got someone who's a very cool person. Uh, I'm going to put it in Skype here. Oh, God, I can't check Skype, man. Oh, you can't? Where do you want me to put it? Put it it's her? okay. Uh, yeah, I, it's whatever. <laughs> it's going to mess up the camera. No. All right, yeah, I'll mess. All right we're going to go with Pooks, then. Pook, oh. is this a good one? Um, I've what? I've rated her a couple times, yeah, and she seems very receptive, very uh, very entertaining, and she is somebody who enjoys all kinds of fourteen content. Like I see her streaming so much; she's doing Sephiroth right now. All right, two a time. We're gonna give them a host, guys. Uh, check her out. Say hey, what's up? How you doing? Uh, and enjoy your time over there. If you don't. Want to say that you don't have to. We're not forcing you to watch them, but go check them out because the uh, Pook here is recommending it. So there you go. And if it sucks, you can blame Pook, right? Yeah, it's all my fault. It's all his fault. But go ahead and say hi. Ask them questions. Interact with them. Uh, I, I don't think she's going to respond too well because she's trying to get Sephiroth Extreme now. But go ahead. Ask her a question. See what's up. Say, hey, guys. Uh, I just came from Mog Talk. I just want to know what's up. How you doing? How, how do you make your hair so great? Yeah. There you That's go. Great question. Yep. All right, guys. Anyways, thank you again for watching, guys. Uh, we'll be seeing you next time. 
Thank you again, Mary Pook, everybody. I'm gonna say bye. I'll see you bye. 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 And I'm gonna sit here and keep going and say bye for a little bit more, so I can go to the start screen and I can get rid of this video. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we go. Transition. Yeah, and delete us. All right, you've All right. been deleted, and now I'm gonna host. Or well, let me do silence real quick. <laughs>